Let's take a look at how to reset a WatchGuard Firebox. There are a few different types of Fireboxes, and this video focuses on the M-Series devices. Before you reset a Firebox, you need to understand the different options available. The first option is Recovery Mode, which boots the Firebox into a separate recovery partition. This enables you to recover a Firebox that is not booting up. Using the recovery partition, the Firebox reflashes and updates the primary partition to attempt to restore normal operation. In order to complete a recovery mode reset, you must use the WatchGuard System Manager software. This resets everything on the device, including the firmware. The other option available is to factory default the Firebox, which resets the Firebox to a default state without touching the firmware. In order to do this, you complete all the steps to put a Firebox into recovery mode, and then power cycle the Firebox to factory default it. After you factory default a Firebox, you can manage it with WatchGuard System Manager, the Web UI, and WatchGuard Cloud. Generally speaking, a factory default is the option to choose if you want to just default your Firebox. You only need to use recovery mode if the Firebox is not booting normally. To start with, let me remind you that using recovery mode will involve taking the Firebox offline and disconnecting it from your network. The Firebox will be completely reset. This means you will need to have physical access to the Firebox to complete this process. If you are doing a recovery mode reset, you will need to install the latest version of firmware for your Firebox and WatchGuard System Manager. This is because the recovery mode process will include updating your Firebox. You do not need to do this for a factory default. Next up, you will want to have a copy of your Firebox feature key on hand to easily load it back into the Firebox after you complete the process. As a reminder, you can obtain this from WatchGuard.com. After logging into your account, hover over My WatchGuard on the Support Center and select Manage Products. Select Network Security. You can search for the Firebox in question at the top then locate it in the list. After selecting the Firebox, click the link here to get the feature key. I would recommend copying the feature key into Notepad and saving it as a text file onto your management computer. Next, remove your Firebox from WatchGuard Cloud if you are using it for logging or management. Log into or select the subscriber account the device is located in in WatchGuard Cloud. From the dashboard, go to Configure at the top and select Devices. Then click the device in question and select the Remove Device option. This will enable you to easily re add the device to WatchGuard Cloud after you complete the recovery mode process. Now that everything else is prepared, the last step is to connect your management computer to the Firebox via the ETH1 interface. We also recommend disconnecting all of the other interfaces to prevent the Firebox from interfering with the network during this process. Now, let's put your Firebox into recovery mode. This is the process for most Firebox M-Series devices. First, start by turning off the Firebox by holding down the power button on the front. Next, hold down the reset button on the front. Go ahead and turn on the Firebox by pressing the power button again. Keep holding down the reset button while the Firebox turns on and watch the arm indicator on the front, the light with the shield icon. Within a minute, you should see the arm indicator start to flash green slowly, about once per second. Continue to hold down the reset button while this is happening. Shortly afterwards, the arm indicator will begin to flash faster, about twice per second. After the arm indicator has started flashing faster, you can release the reset button. Continue to let the firebox boot up. Once the arm indicator begins to flash red, the firebox is in recovery mode and you can proceed to the next step. The M440 has a different procedure for recovery mode. Start by turning off the firebox by holding the power button on the front. Next, hold down the reset button on the front. Go ahead and turn on the firebox by pressing the power button again. There are two lights you will need to keep an eye on, the mode and ATTN or attention indicators. As soon as the mode indicator lights up, release the reset button immediately. You must release the button before the attention indicator begins to blink. If you are successful, the attention indicator will light up solid without blinking, at which point the firebox has booted into recovery mode and you can proceed to the next step. 
Now that the firebox is in recovery mode, you can make the choice about the type of reset you want to complete. If you just want to factory default the firebox, then you need to turn it off and back on at this point. When the firebox boots up, it will be reset and you can start to manage it again. If you are managing your firebox in WatchGuard Cloud, we recommend using the Web UI setup wizard after doing a factory default in order to re-add your device to the cloud. In order to complete the recovery mode reset, we need to go through the quick setup wizard in the WatchGuard system manager, which we'll take a look at now. Here we are on my management computer. I have installed WatchGuard system manager and the latest Fireware OS, connected my computer to the ETH1 interface on the Firebox, and placed my Firebox into recovery mode. While connected to the ETH1 interface, a Firebox will hand out a DHCP address in the 10.0.1 network. If I check ipconfig in a command prompt, I can see I have an address in that network and can ping the Firebox at 10.0.1.1 successfully. Now I will open WatchGuard System Manager, go to Tools at the top, and select the Quick Setup Wizard. First, I will select Yes, my device is ready to be discovered, and if prompted, I will select the network interface the Firebox is connected to. Then the Quick Setup Wizard will scan my local subnet for the Firebox. This can take a minute or so. After discovering the Firebox, I will proceed with configuring some basic settings. First, I can provide a name for the Firebox. Then I can configure the E0 external interface. In my case, I will use DHCP to get a public IP from my ISP. Next, I can configure the ETH1 trusted interface. I will use the default 10.0.1 network, but you will want to configure the subnet you are using for your internal network. If the Firebox acts as a DHCP server for your network, check the box here to enable DHCP. Then I can configure DNS. I will get DNS from my ISP, but you may want to configure specific public or internal DNS servers. Next, I can provide the feature key. I will browse to the text file where I saved my feature key earlier to import it. Since my feature key includes active security subscriptions, the Quick Setup Wizard lets me know that it will automatically enable these subscriptions for me. I am also prompted to choose from a small selection of web blocker categories that I might want to block. I will just accept the defaults. Then I will be asked about log servers, management servers, and remote management. I will skip these steps in my example. Finally, I can configure the Firebox management passphrases. Now the Quick Setup Wizard will reflash the primary partition on the Firebox. It flashes the latest firmware that I have installed on my management computer. Then the Firebox reboots and the configuration settings that I just defined are applied. After the Firebox is reset, you can begin to use it again. How you proceed from here is up to you. You could start from the default state and build a new configuration from scratch. If you have an existing configuration file, you could also save it to the Firebox in order to restore your settings. If you are managing the Firebox in WatchCard Cloud, you will need to log in and add the Firebox to your account again. As long as you re-add the Firebox to WatchCard Cloud on the same day that you deleted it, you will still find your configuration in the deployment history and can revert to it in order to restore your settings. Once the configuration is sorted, you can reconnect the Firebox to your network to get everything back online. To recap, make sure you are prepared before you reset your Firebox by downloading any software you need, getting the feature key, and removing the device from WatchGuard Cloud. After performing the steps to enter recovery mode, use WatchGuard System Manager to perform a recovery mode reset and reflash. If you just want to default the Firebox, power cycle the device after entering recovery mode.